Um, so as you can probably tell, though I'm going to be talking about uh, Silicon Valley, the Silicon Valley ecosystem and the future of uh, Silicon Valley, I'm not actually from there. Uh, I'm originally from London. I grew up in London um, and I moved to Silicon Valley in 2007 after deciding to relocate my six-month-old startup at the time out to Silicon Valley. And the process for us, or what drew us there initially, is I remember one particularly sort of depressive evening when I started Googling mistakes that startups make. And I came across an essay from uh, somebody who I didn't know at the time called Paul Graham, the founder of something which I didn't know very much about at the time called Y Combinator. And the essay was titled 18 Mistakes That Kill Startups. And as I was reading through the list of mistakes, I realized that we were making every single one of them. But what made me actually feel um, uplifted was that I also felt it was the first time that I was listening to someone who really understood early stage startups and was giving me advice um, that actually seemed helpful. And I just felt that at the time, I wasn't getting that from the people I was around in London. And the more of Paul Graham's essays I read, the more I decided that if I really wanted to go about building a technology company, I needed to be based out in Silicon Valley. And so uh, that evening, actually, I applied to Icombinator for funding. A couple of weeks later, we were accepted um, and moved out to the Valley in January 2007. So when I was thinking about sort of how to narrow down the quite broad question of the future of Silicon Valley, I decided I'd approach it from the lens of what is it that attracts startups, and in particular founders, because really Silicon Valley is about the people, to Silicon Valley and what makes it a special place. And today, I think there are sort of four main reasons or four sort of main things that give it a very unique culture. One is the knowledge. I've already touched upon that. But the knowledge contained within the minds of the people in Silicon Valley is essentially the largest repository of startup knowledge on the planet. Um, it's very hard to spend time in Silicon Valley and not come away having learned more about uh, technology or startups or building companies. The second is culture. I think what, start, what Silicon Valley has that's quite unique um, is technology and in particular startups just pervade the entire culture and the environment wherever you are. It's very hard to go to any cafe or grab a drink somewhere without overhearing a conversation about startups um, and technology. And that has various knock-on effects, um, one of which is it introduces a large amount of serendipity. So many. I've seen so many deals or so many investments happen when someone bumped into someone over coffee at a cafe um, and things just sort of went from there. Thirdly, it's, Silicon Valley has the sort of dentist concentration of capital, in particular venture capital, um, essentially anywhere in the world. But what's particularly important, I think, is that it has the best early stage capital. And I think that's what really affects startups, is if you look at sort of ecosystems of, or startup hubs around the world, most of them have access to late stage capital. I certainly remember this in London. Um, when we were approaching investors, plenty of them were interested if we had a million or more than a million dollars in annual revenue, but no startup starts off on day one with that amount of revenue. What Silicon Valley has is a lot of investors who have made their own money through technology, often via startups, um, and are willing to take a risk on first time founders. And fourthly, I think what, again, Silicon Valley has is just um, is essentially star power and success. When you're, when you're out there, you see these legends like Mark Zuckerberg or previously Steve Jobs walking around. And I think it gives everyone a sense that what previously might have seemed impossible is possible because these success stories are real people. And if you spend time out there, you start bumping into connections or bumping into the people themselves um, and start realizing that it may actually be possible to achieve what you want to achieve. So that's sort of the ingredients that make it an interesting place today. But thinking about the future and where it's heading, I think there are some important trends that are sort of going around the world that will affect what happens in Silicon Valley and the trajectory that it takes. Of the things that I mentioned, some of them aren't going to change at all. I think knowledge will always be there, capital will always be in Silicon Valley, and startup culture will always be pervasive. But I do believe that at the moment, we're seeing a global sort of shift culturally towards startups becoming more mainstream. 
and you don't have to look very far to see that happening. You see more and more movies about Facebook. Um, actually, at Y Combinator, we saw a significant jump in funding activity when the Facebook movie came out. Um, there's a movie about Steve Jobs coming out. And while these seem like trivial matters, um, they're actually quite important because they're all very influenced, um, whether we like to admit it or not, by the sort of culture or the zeitgeist of the moment. And in my experience, when people are thinking or when they're starting companies and they're trying to decide where should they be based, should they stay where they are or should they move to a place like Silicon Valley, it's not a decision that's always sort of black and white. There's sort of very, there's sort of minutiae or sort of subtleties involved in it. Um, and I think the decision becomes a lot tougher when you feel like where you are at the moment has an existing ecosystem that you're leaving behind to move elsewhere. And the more people that sort of read about startups, the more people that start companies, the more ecosystems or more startups will be across the globe. Um, and the tougher it will be for people to actually move to other places because they'll feel like they're leaving a community behind. I think like an example of the power of um, startups being in popular culture is myself. I remember when we raised our first chunk of angel money, it was a small amount, only $15,000. Um, but when we raised it, to us it seemed like a huge deal because we've been working um, on essentially no money for six months um, and we were sort of, our motivation was running low. But when I tried to explain this to my friends, everyone sort of gave me a puzzle, looked, um, didn't really know what angel investment meant and asked whether that meant I had a job now. Um, and I said, no, that's not how it works. But um, nowadays I go back and those same friends are asking me or pitching me on ideas and are asking about angel investment and have an interest in it. Um, and I think that has a big impact um, on the sort of trajectory of startups across, across the world. The second thing that I think is going to have a big impact on um, the ecosystem in Silicon Valley, and we're already seeing signs of it, is what Mark Andreessen coined software eating the world. I think we're increasingly seeing the definition of technology company um, broadening. So you're seeing companies that aren't really so much about technology um, beyond the fact that they have a website. Um, and I think a prime example from Y Combinator's portfolio would be Airbnb. Um, it would have been tough to imagine five or six years ago um, that the hotel industry would be facing stiff competition from a startup that really had nothing other than a website with a small fledgling community. And we're seeing increasing signs of markets like that, whether it's the hospitality industry, the finance industry, um, the fashion industry, where technology is sort of creeping into it and disrupting the space. And you're seeing startup hubs forming in areas where there are other industries. So within America, for example, we're seeing um, a large number of startups um, increasingly forming in New York because it's a better place to be based for um, finance or for fashion. And obviously another, another example of that would just be internationally as sort of developing countries mature, there's more opportunities for entrepreneurs. Um, and the biggest, the biggest, one of the sort of biggest lessons we've learned at Y Combinator is that the best startups spend a lot of time early on with their early users, um, meeting them in person, watching them use the product. And it's very hard to do that when you're based in one area and your customers are somewhere else. Um, and I've noticed myself an advice to Y Combinator companies over the past couple of years, as they come to us from all over the world and they ask us, should we stay in Silicon Valley or should we go back to where we're from? The sort of guiding line that we always use is, well, where are your customers? Um, and if they say their customers are somewhere else, we tell them, we'll go to where your customers are and then decide what to do. The final, the final and I think actually the most important um, issue that's going to affect the trajectory of Silicon Valley over the next few years um, is the issue of immigration. Because currently you see a number of companies that are formed outside of Silicon Valley um, still end up in Silicon Valley because they're drawn there by the desire for capital um, or in particular engineers. And right now, if you spend any time with either startups or um, the larger companies in the Valley... One minute. Sure. Um, you see that the biggest concern that everyone has is hiring engineers, and there's a chronic shortage, particularly in America, um, of engineers right now. The system just simply isn't producing enough to cope with the demand for those jobs. And you're seeing all of the top technology companies um, lobbying government to try and get them to make the immigration processes, especially for engineers, easier. Um, but it's not, it's not happening fast enough, and I think in the meantime, there's a big opportunity for startup ecosystems around the world to make it easier for engineers um, 
to migrate or to immigrate to them. Um, and that's a good way of sort of trickling in or developing a startup hub. And we're already seeing it in places like Canada. Um, and I'd say even in the UK, I look back and I think, my friends are being turned off by the idea of having to go through a laborious immigration process and they'd rather just stay, they'd rather just stay at home. Um, so that's just a collection of thoughts about Silicon Valley and where it's going. Thank you. Thank you.